the NSA yet. I'm talking about the National Speakers Association. How can that organization help you elevate your visibility, your impact, your influence? Do you need to perhaps flip the script? <laughs> Why am I holding a spatula? Well, I'm holding a spatula because I'm going to be bringing on Frank Kitchen, who is a certified speaking professional and who knows all about how to elevate your brand and business. He's going to be giving a special masterclass coming up on April 13th in New Haven. And if you're interested in learning how to really spice up your speaking business, well, Frank's going to give us some tips. And hello, Frank, thank you so much for joining me today. Hello, and, Pat. Thanks, uh, thanks for being here. I've got my spatula. I know you're having allergies. We're all having allergies here. Why? Oh, I got, all right, we got our spatulas. <laughs> I love that you, your whole, um, you know, idea of spicing up your speaking business and Frank Kitchen and tying it all together. What are you going to teach us on April 13th? I mean, the, the thing that almost every professional speaker wants to know is how do I get booked consistently? I mean, so we're going to be sharing the ingredients needed to be booked on a consistent basis because uh, cash flow is what makes this business work and this uh, passion work for us. Absolutely. You know, and I think I'm trying to figure out where do people get stuck? Because I know we talked earlier uh, a couple of weeks ago, we, we talked about how confidence really can affect your bottom line. Where are people going wrong when it comes to marketing and maybe not being that confident? Well, the, the first one I love to share with everybody is we think of ourselves as speakers, speakers, coaches, consultants, trainers. And the thing we need to do is put the word professional in front of it. Because when you add the word professional, I'm like, obviously, you've worked in the media and news. So if I go, hey, I'm a professional broadcaster, then you understand, okay, you do this as an occupation, you get compensated for it. So we have to recognize that we are professional speakers. If we spend all of our time working on our speeches, then we're not working on how we get those speeches and those performances on stage. And this is a sales job. I mean, only about 10 to 20 percent is actually done speaking, training, coaching. The rest is finding those opportunities and you know securing those opportunities. So we have to think of ourselves as professionals. And when you see yourself as a professional, you're thinking about the marketing, the sales and how to get on stages. Yeah. And then taking a step back from that really is you had told me, you know, our gift is our personality. So mm -hmm. before we even get to the marketing point, you know, we have to approach the stage and have something really unique to offer and also, you know, tap into our personality. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to be sharing, a, you know, slides and answering questions, but one of the things I'll share people love is when I said, hey, our job is to stand out from the crowd, not blend in. And too many times what we'll do is we'll get into this business and we'll see another speaker and go, I'm going to be just like him or just like her. And now you just look like a cheap knockoff. <laughs> what people really want is they want your personality, your experiences, your background, your, your you know philosophy on a particular subject, because anything can be found through AI and Google now. So they want your self-generated content not content they can just go find on the internet. So when we talk about really going into our personality, people want to hear, are you going to do something to challenge you know, a particular group and inspire another? So I always say, are you challenging the haters and inspiring the believers? Mm. That's what we have to do when we go out and speak. And that only comes from our personality. We have to show our true personality on stage versus this robotic, crafted persona because people can see that. Absolutely. Now you have spoken thousands and thousands of times because you have earned the CSP uh, recognition. Uh, but for those who don't know about it, because, you know, we have a lot of people that come to our chapter meetings that are new, that are just getting involved in speaking. Um, tell me a little bit about what that designation means. Yeah. Well, the designation means certified speaking professional. It was created to ensure that clients can, you know, understand they're working with one of the best. Somebody who's not just coming in off the street or seeing this as a hobby, that they're actually putting all their energy in to make sure they're building a long lasting business. So in order to earn this, it's not an award. It's not, you know, something that, you know, people can just rate like Yelp and give it to you. This is actually a peer and client reviewed designation. So it's almost like putting doctor, you know, of speaking to your name. Mm. And some of the basis are how much money you make as a speaker. I know we're not going to talk numbers here right now. Uh, how many times that you've spoken, uh, that you've been doing it for anywhere from five to 10 years. So it's a piece of, okay, this person actually is accredited. I mean, we wouldn't go have a plumber work on our house without their accreditations. So it's the same thing for speaking. And when you earn this CSP, you can actually share it with their client. And that's going to, once again, build up their confidence. Because many times when you're booked as a speaker, people are putting their, their necks out on the line to bring you in. 
So this is a way to ensure, hey, you know what? I'm bringing in a qualified expert to speak on their subject. Excellent. You know, and a lot of people, like when they get into speaking, you know, they're really the biggest challenge, I think, is trying to fill your calendar. Right. And so is that something that you're going to be talking about uh, during the master class in April? Yes, we're going to definitely talk about how to fill in the calendars. I mean, sharing right now, because we're giving tips right now, is many times as a professional speaker, if you call up somebody and you find out they've got a conference the next week or next month, you go, hey, do you have your speaker? You're already positioning yourself not to look like a professional. So many groups now are booking six months to a year out. Um, that, that timeline shrunk due, due to COVID. So you'll still get people three to six months. But the people who are truly planning because they have to use your face and your content to draw people in. They're usually booking about a year out. So if right now you and I are talking here, it's April, then you should already be looking at the fourth quarter of 2023 and the first quarter of 2025 for speaking opportunities. If you're looking for the jobs in May and June, you're already behind. So the idea is when you find out there's a group that has an event or a conference, what we want to do is not call and say, hey, and we got to call everybody. It's not just emails. Oh, we yeah. have to call and ask, when do you start looking for your speakers? When do you look for your trainers? Go ahead and be an investigator to find out. And they're going to say, hey, had a group the other day. Frank, we don't start looking until November. Well, I'm going to go in. We'll talk about CRMs. I'm going to go into my customer relations management tool and go, hey, you know what? Don't contact Pat until November. But in November, using my personality, you're going to get the, hey, Pat, it's Frank. You told me to contact you here in November to discuss what we can cook up in 2025. And just that piece there will change things for you to help you build up and fill that calendar. But we really have to start putting together a a prospecting calendar on our end to think about what industries, when do they start looking for the speakers? When's the ideal time to contact them? Because I'm going to tell people this is a sales job, but if you're following what's in sales books, you're going to fall flat on your face. Mm. I mean, trying to call people seven times a week, you know, every day. <laughs> this is a relationship business. That's going to get people to hang up the phone or tell all the people in their network, don't work with him. Don't work with her. They are terrible to work with. So you have to make sure you're contacting these people in the time that they're looking to book their speakers. Makes total sense. And part of your uh, presentation, your masterclass is gonna also include part of your proven recipe with the ingredients, <laughs> the tools, the techniques, yeah. and also a little section on interactive storytelling. So I think this is gonna be very valuable for anyone uh, that wants to come by and, and hear you speak. And I'm so looking forward to learning a little bit more about that. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be great because when we talk about interactive engaging, I am going to be speaking with, the with is the word, not at or for people, because if we're doing that, then it's a lecture. We're not here for a lecture. Learning is interactive, hands-on. Humans are visual and hands-on learners. I'm going to share content and information, but everybody who shows up is going to be asking me questions. I want to answer the questions that they have, not just to come and talk about what I want to talk about. So the interactive piece is for me to share all my knowledge, I've been doing this now as a speaker is 18 years. I've been in the business, kind of scary, almost 30 years. I used to book speakers and performers. And I just want to share with you what's worked for me. Is it guaranteed to work for everybody who's there? No, there's no one right way to do this business, but I'm going to share what has worked for me. But I also will share what hasn't worked for me so people can also learn from my failures. Are you finding that uh, companies are more interested in booking keynote speakers or interactive workshop uh, facilitators? Um, it's, it's changing. It's like, it depends on the industry. There's some groups who want, you know, the, the standard lecture, white papers, give us like your industry, you know, knowledge, but as humans, especially coming out of COVID, I've seen that people want more of this interactive hands-on experience. I mean, they don't want a speech. They want an experience, something that's different because we are in a world where we've got Google university, we've got chat GPT. People can go look for that. They're looking for your unique spin on solving their problem. And that's what they're bringing in. So even we call it a keynote now, keynote is usually for a conference or a convention where everybody is in there. Mm -hmm. Now people are just looking for, as I call it, interactive learning experiences. Mm -hmm. And what you're gonna let, share with people is like, hey, my experience or my program. And then people are like, well, can you turn it into a keynote or break breakout or a half day training or full day training? And your answer is gonna be yes. And yeah. you really know the subject matter. So. I do call myself a keynote speaker because I love to go to conferences and conventions and be the person who opens things up. But we've got, once again, within NSA, we've got coaches, we've got trainers, we've got consultants. And you have to figure out what works best for you, what brings you joy, what makes you be at your best. And if at your best is doing a half day training, then you know what? Plant the flag and that's where you go. If your deal is you'd like to be a keynote speaker, just be have that 60 to 90 minutes on stage and have everybody focus on you, go ahead. 
if you feel the best thing for you is, hey, I'm going to do workshops. As long as you're happy and the client's happy, then go go there. But make it as interactive as possible, which means they can ask you questions. We don't want to have this scripted, robotic, hey, it's word for word every time. People will watch me speak. Comes like, Frank, it was the same speech, but it was different than what you did last time because the audience is different. The audience has different questions, different wants, different needs. So you have to be able to interact. And when you interact, you actually validate your expertise because you're not reading from a script. You're actually answering from knowledge and experience. Absolutely. And I, I think you hit on it, whatever brings you joy. But the interactive bit is uh, is very fulfilling. I absolutely agree with you. Well, Frank Kitchen, thank you so much for joining me today. And I'll look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much, Pat. And I can't wait to work with everybody there at your chapter. Oh, thank you. And if you are interested in coming to Frank's masterclass, it's going to be on April 13th. That's a Saturday. And it is from eight to noon. And you can find out more information at nsact.org. If you're interested in speaking, if you're already a speaker, if you want to even get better,